All right, today all we're going to do is just go over the um, that worksheet. What do we call it? Chapter. So like chapter five, test. And then what it form two C is that what it was? Okay. So form two C. That's what we're going to go over right now. All right. Um, I tell you what. This I did this in the other class, and I think I hope anyway this was helpful, and I think I'll do it for you guys too. Before we start answering the the uh, specific questions on that worksheet. Let's go over three main things that you're going to have to know. All right, we're going to go through them at lightning speed. I don't know lightning, but a little quicker than when I first taught the thing. But look, I really recommend to you that you go back. Oh, come on, grab that thing. Where is it? There it is. I really recommend to you that you go back and watch if, if you still have questions on this, if you still don't understand this, if what I do today doesn't make any sense to you whatsoever, go back and watch the videos when I first talked about it because, because I went through it a little bit, a little bit more detail, um, a little slower. I'm going to go through a little bit faster today, but this, this should be review for you. All right? This should be review because all of you were either here or had a chance to watch this um, on YouTube. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is this. The very first thing we learned when we do, dealt with this triangle. Remember we had three lines. They all intersected at one point. We had three special circumstances. The first one was called the circumcenter. Circumcenter. All right, and how did we find the circumcenter? Well, we had to draw... Do you remember how we found the circumcenter? The three, do you remember this? Perpendicular bisectors. All right, that's exactly what I'm going to do right now, okay? I'm going to draw the three perpendicular bisectors. What does it mean to be a bisector? It means it hits it where? At the midpoint, right? So I'm going to draw a midpoint here. I'm going to find the midpoint here. And then I'm going to find the midpoint over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bisect, that's about right there, I'm going to bisect all three of these sides. But it doesn't just say bisector, it says what? Perpendicular bisector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line at from this midpoint perpendicular. Right? It could stop at the triangle, it could go through the triangle, it doesn't really make any difference. Right? So that would be a perpendicular bisector right there. If it's, if it's a bisector, it means this side and this side are equal to each other. So that's one perpendicular bisector. How many of these am I going to draw on this triangle? Three of them. Because I got three sides, I'm going to draw three perpendicular bisectors. So let's go over here and draw a perpendicular bisector. Well, I go through the midpoint and I got to draw it. How? I got to draw it so this line is what? It's perpendicular. It forms a what? Not just a straight line. They're all straight lines. A what? What did I just draw? A right angle, 90 degree angle, okay? So now I'm going to do it one more time. And I'm going to go from here and I'm going to go perpendicular. Now, if I did these correctly, then it should go right through the other two. You see it? See they all intersect in one point? If I did it right, they should all intersect at one point. That one point, what do you think it's called? The circumcenter. All right? So that's important right there just to realize that it's called the circumcenter. But there's something special about this point. There's something very special about this point. What's true about it? It's something about the distance from this point to where? To the to the what? Not to the sides, no, because look, this distance right here is definitely not the same distance here and here. But it's distant it's equal distant to the what? The angles, right, to the angles, to the vertices is what we say, but yeah, to the to the angles. All right, so look, that distance from that circumcenter to that angle is the same as it is to there as it is to there. And we went through a lot more detail when I first taught the thing, but we ended up basically saying this was true. So look at the blue lines. So those blue lines right there are all equal to each other if this is the circumcenter. How did we find the circumcenter? We drew the three perpendicular bisectors. That means we found the midpoint of all three sides, drew a line that's perpendicular, right, to that midpoint of all three sides, and they all intersect at one point. And that point is special. Why is that point special? Because it's equidistant 
the same distance to all three vertices. All right. What possible type of question could they give you for something like this? Well, they could say, I don't know, let's say this blue one is 5 right here. And they ask you to find this one right here. Okay, what would this be from here to here, this blue one? That'd be 5 as well, right? Because it's equidistant. Or they might make it a little tougher and say this is like 3x plus 2 or something, right? And what would you do to solve for x? Well, don't plug it in yet. Set them equal to each other, right? Don't plug this into x, but set these equal to each other. Solve for x. Then once you solve for x, then you can plug it in, okay? But you already know what it is anyway. You know it's 5, don't you? It's just a matter of setting them equal to each other and then solving for x. And then you got x. They could ask you all kinds of things. All right? That's circumcenter. We got that? Yes? All right. There was a second one that we learned. Do you remember the name of the second one that we learned? It was called the in center. Very good. All right. So let's do a little review on that as well. So we call the second one, I'll put a two right here. Is that all right? The in center. There's basically only three you have to really know. We talked about four of them, but that fourth one wasn't really that big of a deal. It's the first three that I really care about. Okay. And how did we find the in center? What did we have to draw? Do you remember that? Draw the three bisected, what'd you say? Good. Bisected the angle. So we want to draw the three angle bisectors. Now this time we're bisecting the angle. We're not necessarily going to the midpoint. So midpoint really has nothing to do with this. What we're trying to do is split the angle in half. So let's start at this top angle right here. See what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to take this angle, this big angle at the top, I'm, going to tr I'm trying to split it in half. Now, would I draw it like that? Is that splitting that angle up top in half? No. Would I go like this? No. I'd probably go around where? About right in there? Now, where am I looking? I'm looking up here, aren't I? This is where I'm looking. I'm looking to see if this angle is equal to this angle. If it is, then I've drawn an angle bisector. How many of those do I have to draw now? Three of them. And guess what happens to all three of them? What do they do? They all meet. They all intersect each other at the same point, don't they? So down here, watch this. If I bisected this angle, uh, it looks a little off, but just pretend those two are equal to each other. And then if I did what? Bisect this angle, it should meet right there at the same point. Everybody see that? And that means that I bisected this angle as well. What's the name of that point? It's called the in center. Now there's something special about that point, that in center. So first thing you have to know how to do is, is know how we found that in center. All right? But then we learned something about that in center. What did we learn? We learned that it's equidistant, not from the angles this time, but from the sides. That's right. So that already looks pretty close to perpendicular. I'll just draw it like this. Now if I say it's equidistant, to the sides, the distance from a point to a side has got to be perpendicular. That's why I draw all these perpendicular. Now it may not look like it because I just kind of eyeballed it a little bit, all right? But if I was really, really careful with this, had a protractor or something, measured out the angles, um, I would see that all three of these blue lines right here would be equal to each other. And that's what's special about the in center. And again, what could they ask you? They could say that this little blue line is 3, and this right here is 5x plus 1 or something. Okay? And what do we do? We know the blue lines are equal to each other, so we set this equal to this. Right? Or they might say it's like 3x you know, plus 7 or something. And you set them equal to each other, solve for x, you can plug them back in. There's all kinds of different things you can do. They might say this. They might say, oh, this angle is 30 degrees. And they might ask for this angle right here. What would this angle be right here without doing any work at all? It's 30 degrees as well, right? You with me on that? If they tell you it's the in center, how do you know that these two angles are equal to each other? Because how do we get the in center? We get it by bisecting the angle, right? So if this is 30, this has to be 30. Or they could say, like they had a problem, which one was it? Look at number 5. They had something like this. They said, what if this was x plus 15 and this angle right here was 2x minus 10? Forget the 30. That was just from before. Get rid of all that. Okay. 
What if they said, this is a little different from number five in the problem, because they tell you on number five it's an angle bisector. But what if they did this? What if they said this point right here is the in center, solve for x? Well, if this is the in center, how do you find the in center? By bisecting the angle, right? So that must mean that this angle and this angle have to be equal to each other. So what do we do with those two things? We set them equal to each other, right? So let's just do the math right here. 2x minus 10 equals x plus 15. And let's go ahead and solve for x now. So we subtract x from both sides, add a 10 to both sides. This should be old hat by now, right? You've done a ton of this all, all year long. So that canceled, that canceled. 2x minus 1x is x equals 15 plus 10 is 25. All right, so that's what x would be. I could ask you to solve for this angle or for this angle right here. It doesn't matter which one. So once I get x, what x is equal to, what do I do? Plug it in, right. So if x is 25, I plug it in right there. So what is it? It's 2 times 25, which is 2 times 25. Come on, it's 2 times 25. It's 50, and then minus 10 is 40. So that angle right there is 40 degrees. Without doing any math at all, what's this angle going to be? It's got to be 40, right, because it's an angle bisector, right? They're equal to each other. Let's just put it in and see if it is. 25 plus 15 is 40. Yep, it works. Got it? Okay. So that's in center. We've got circumcenter. This is the last time I'm going to go through these three, all right? And I'm putting it all together in one chunk for you so that you can... Um, you can look at it, and hopefully you'll remember what all three are. And then the third one. Let's do the third one. Um, let's copy the triangle first. Put it right here. And then we had a third one that we had to learn, number three. Remember the name of that thing? Centroid, right. It's the centroid. Sounds a little different. It's a centroid. Now, how did we find the centroid? We, what do we draw on our triangle? We draw the three, anybody remember what that was? I'll just tell you. It's called the medians. This is something that you should know, all right? I know you've got, you've just come off of a long weekend, but once you start studying, you know, you should know that you're finding the three medians. What in the world is a median, by the way? Well, it goes from an angle to the, what do you think? Midpoint. Remember we had that long story about the grassy part in the middle of the road and all that stuff, the median? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, I'm going to figure out where all the midpoints are. And I'm going to put the midpoints on here. And then we can draw the median once I find all the midpoints. So there you go. So there's my three midpoints. Now, where do I draw it from? Do I go perpendicular? No, that was the first one. That was the circumcenter, right? We did perpendicular bisector. What do we do? We go from the vertex to the midpoint, just like that. We go from the vertex to the midpoint, from the vertex to the midpoint. And look at that. Lo and behold, guess what they do? They all intersect in one point, don't they? Now, there was something special about that point. Do you remember what was special about the centroid? This is actually very similar to number three. So let's just, since we're going over this, let's just um, do number three. All right. And then this is E in the middle right here. The centroid is point E and then F and G right here. So this is number three on that worksheet. This is what they tell you. They say point E is the centroid, all right? Well, how did you get the centroid? Well, you found the midpoint, right? So you know those two are equal, you know these two are equal, you know these two and these two right here are equal. And it says, if BD, let's write everything that they say. Oops, BD, it's supposed to be a B. <laughs> That's weird, let's try this again. BD is 12, all right? EF is seven, AG is 15, they tell you all this stuff, and then they say to find ED. This is what we're looking for. We're trying to find a line segment, aren't we? All right, how long is line ED? Well, let's find ED. ED is this one right here, isn't it? All right, that's what we're trying to find. Um, what do they tell us? They tell us BD is 12. 
So look at this. BD, that whole thing right there is 12. Is that going to help us find ED? Absolutely, yeah, because it's definitely, it gives you the whole thing. ED is what? Is it the shorter part or is it the longer part? The shorter part. Now, we have to know something about the centroid. There's something special about that centroid. That centroid divides that line segment basically into three parts, doesn't it? It doesn't look like three parts, but it does. Because this would be what? One third of it, right? And this would be two thirds of it. Okay, that means this is twice as big as this. Everybody with me? But ED, they give you the whole thing. They give you the whole thing as 12. What did I just say? ED is how many thirds? one-third of the whole thing. So if I know the whole thing is 12, how do I find a third of 12? Just divide it by 3. That's right. That's taking a third of it. So I take the whole thing, I divide it by 3, and what is 12 divided by 3? It's, nope, it's 4. Okay, so ED is 4, and then I'm done. That's all I got to do for that particular problem. Now, I could give you all kinds of other problems. Let's Let's maybe do some other things I could possibly tell you. All right, I could ask you for BE. How would I find BE? If I know ED is 4, how would I find BE from here to here? That's right, I double it. Because remember, this is 2 thirds, this is 1 third. That means this is twice as big as this one. Everybody see that? So this line segment BE is twice as big as it is from E to D. So if this is 4, what's BE? It's 8. And of course, if you add them up, you get 12, and it works, doesn't it? Make sense? All right. Um, what if I told you, let's do this in a different color. I'm just making this up, all right? Just making this up. What if I told you AE was 10, and I asked you to find the whole thing. Now, nah, let's just say I just asked you to find EG. What if I told you this was 10? Then this would be what? Five. I, I tell you what, you know what I should have done? Let's just use the stuff that they give us. They said that AG is 15, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so let's just use that. So AG right there is 15. Which one am I going to find? Am I going to find EG or am I going to find AE if I know this is 15? EG is the easiest one. So if the whole thing's 15, EG is the shorter one, what do I do? I just did it earlier. Divided by 3. What's 15 divided by 3? That's 5. If this is 5, what's AE? It's got to be 10. Make sense? What else do they tell you? They tell you that AG is 7. I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw AG. I saw the 7. EF. They tell you EF is 7. So where is EF? Let's do it a different color since we're starting to all run together here. EF is 7, right? Uh, what do you think you could find if they tell you this is 7? EC has got to be 14, right? Or they could ask you what FC is equal to. What would FC be equal to? 21. That's right. 7 and 14 is 21. really doesn't get a whole lot harder than that. What they ask you to find is probably the hardest thing. If they tell you the whole thing, right, to find the short part, what do you do? Just divide it by 3 and you got the short part. If you want to find the longer part, you take the shorter one, you double it, and you got the longer one. It's not hard, is it? It's really easy. The math is really simple. Really simple. But you got to know the relationships. You got to know you know, which one is bigger than the other, which one is twice as big, and which one is a third, and all that. So there it is. We hit a couple problems on that worksheet. We'll hit some more specific problems tomorrow, okay? But I think this is good for you to see. It's really good for you to see all three of those all in one chunk, okay? And that's basically what I did. There's the third one, centroid. There's the second one, in center. There's the first one, circumcenter. Go through these. You've got to, you've got to study this stuff on your own. You can't just rely on just sitting here and listening to me just blabber on and on okay that helps a little bit it helps you kinda get an idea of what you're supposed to be doing but to really get the hang of this stuff you're gonna have to study this yourself and you're gonna have to do these problems yourself find some extra problems there's extra problems in the book you can do okay do the problems from the lesson in the back of the book there's this thing called what do they call it just extra problems or extra practice or something like that there's all kinds of places you can get extra practice, all right? But you've got to do this. you got to do work on your own. You can't just sit there and just rely on me teaching this stuff to you. That's not going to get it done, all right? It's going to help. It's a good start, but it's not going to do everything for you. i got an assignment for you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to collect that worksheet, and then um, I'll give it back to you tomorrow because we're going to go over it some more tomorrow. But I want to collect it today just to make sure you did it. But here, i got a... Uh, 
I got an assignment for you tonight. Here it is. It's called. It's just from the book. All right. It's the practice test, and it's um, page three eighty one. I think it's 1 to 25. Now, just like that worksheet, you know how we skipped a few of those? Where if it says indirect proof or it says prove, you can skip those. Okay, I'm not sure exactly which ones they are here, but you can find them yourself. And this is your homework tonight. Write it down. It's page 381, and you're doing 1 to 25. Remember, we're taking our test on Thursday. Today's Tuesday. We're taking the test on Thursday and corrections on Friday. All right, tomorrow is the last day to review, so make sure that you do this. Come ready if you have any questions. We'll answer the questions either on the worksheet or this practice test or both. And then that that's going to be it. All right, I think I've done plenty after tomorrow to get you prepared for the test on Thursday. So please be ready for it.